All right, welcome back to the Sooner Surge. And before we get started with this video, make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, click the button there, turn on the notifications uh, so you can be notified when we put out these videos. Been having a lot of content lately, and we'll keep it up for you. Uh, this one's going to be in regards to recruiting, which I know everybody is excited about just recently with all the, the buzz going along with the recruiting side of things and how he's moved up dr drastically up to, what, number eight right now? Is that correct, guys, that, that, that they're standing right now? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, a lot of buzz now. So we're going to kind of talk about some guys that are left on the board for OU that they could get. Uh, and just mention some names so y'all y'all start it off, man. It starts at a wide receiver. I mean, this week, actually, Terry Bussey, I believe it's the 26th, right? That's when he will make his announcement. 28th. 28th, okay. Oklahoma A&M battle for Terry Bussey. Um, but, yeah, that he's really right now the only name in Oklahoma's wide receiver room that they are – uh, continuing to recruit and Terry Bussey, I think AM is actually recruiting him as a DB, but I mean, he's one of the, you know, best wide, best athletes in the country. And, and that'd be huge. If Emmett Jones can pull that off, I I'd consider Emmett Jones's heat check because he has what five wide receivers in this class already potentially going for a sixth. And he's trying to pull off what would be the, the biggest win that Oklahoma has I mean, on the offensive side of the ball. That, that's huge. Like, it, it, it's going to be tough for Emmett Jones, and we'll see how things shake out this week. But Terry Bussey it is the, uh, the the only target right now at wide receiver who he, he's coming this week. So he, he'll be the next target to either fall to OU's board or fall off of OU's board. Yeah, Terry Bussey's regarded by many as uh, he's in that conversation for the greatest Texas high school football player of all time. Uh, season he had last year, he had like 80 touchdowns. He plays quarterback uh, out of small school in Texas. So he's listed as an athlete, number one athlete in the country. Should be a unanimous uh, five-star. Uh, however, there's a couple sites that don't have him. I think it's – I know Rivals and maybe even on three that doesn't have him as a five-star uh, in the athlete rankings. Uh, but Emmett Jones has been recruiting him very heavily. Uh, five wide receivers or not. Terry Busty's a guy you got to take. If he wants to come to your school – you don't tell Terry Bussey no. He's that good of a player. Uh, last weekend, the Sooners were in the 918 in uh, Green Country for the Tulsa game. Emmett Jones was not with them Friday night. He was uh, down in Texas watching Terry Bussey play before a 230 kick in Tulsa. So I guess take with that as you will. Down to OU AM. Uh, AM proximity. That's a big thing with them. Uh, close to home. Uh, it's been a school that's led along, like, really through the entire the entire. It's been A&M. So the fact that OU's even been able to make it somewhat of a play, uh, we'll find out on the 28th how much that uh, came to fruition. But the uh, fact that OU was even able to kind of put their foot in the race is impressive alone when you look at it. He's a Texas kid, and Texas A&M led for so long. Yeah, I mean, adding him would, would just be insane for Oklahoma's wide receiver room. You already have Zion Carney, Ivan Carrion, Zion Reagans, Dozie Ezekonom, and, and K.J. Daniels. So if you were able to get Bussy, I mean, that's just that, – that that's crazy. Hunter mentioned number one athlete in the country. Uh, again, it, it's going to be really tough to pull that off. Um, but Emmett Jones has – he's kind of gotten whoever he's wanted lately. So we'll I see kinda... if he's able to make some magic happen there. Yeah, I know you, you all say it's kind of tough and everything. I yeah, I, I kind of feel pretty good uh, going into this week. Uh, and that, that's based on Emmett Jones' closing time, guys. He's closer. And uh, I, I don't see – I can't say that OU is definitely going to land Bussy, but I'm feeling pretty confident. I am. I think just recently with – Emmett Jones and just the way he's staying in this recruitment. And we've talked about this with the defensive linemen guys. And oh, you lost out on some defensive linemen. But when you put yourself in the position to get them and you are in the top two and you're that good of a closer like Emmett Jones is, guys, we've heard what was the number one thing when Emmett Jones came to OU? Texas Urgent. recruiting. Period. Texas high, Texas high school. We that's the number one thing about Emmett Jones. Plus, go look at OU receivers right now. Uh yeah. 
pretty dang good development. So, Are you saying that you would say that Oklahoma is favored to land Terry Bussey? I think right now, I think that that race is. I would say it's about fifty-fifty, neck and neck. I, I, I don't. I'm not saying right now that I think A and M's in the lead. I, I don't. I don't know that, and I, I can't confidently say that I think they are. I think it's that close, and I think Emmett Jones could definitely land this guy. Yeah, the, a big thing with Terry Bussey is he's got to decide what position he wants to play in college. You're getting recruited two different sides of the ball. OU as a wide receiver, Texas A&M as a defensive back. So that's what – but you mentioned uh, the wide receiver room right now. Like, they're looking like the best room OU's had in a long time, and they've had a lot of really, really, really good wide receiver room. Just the physicality that they are playing with, the amount of just pure playmakers that the wide receiver uh, group has, and that's all – a lot of that is due to uh, Emmett Jones. Well, I'm going to – over in January. Well, I'm going to change my my stance in a little bit if that's the case. As far as if Bussy's if A and M's offering him at defensive back, then I think it's definitely going to he's going to be at OU uh, because I think I, have you watched this guy's tape? He would be it would be insane if he doesn't play any type of receiver. I mean, the There's guys other factors athletic. that go into his recruitment yeah. besides position. That are good. I understand. Well, I he just, is so okay. athletic, man. Yeah, he's he's all around. I mean, it, he's the undisputed number one athlete in the country. Like, I mean, Terry Bussey is the reason that they made athlete a position in recruiting. Like, he plays quarterback at Timpson uh, and now is arguably the number one receiver in the class, could be in that conversation for number one defensive back if that's what he was being uh, completely recruited as. Uh, I mean, even as a quarterback, running back even, like, uh, we talk about you, people see Zachariah Branch out at USC, the kind of the versatility that he has. Relique Brown had it too. Like that's really what Terry Bussey is, and honestly, to an even higher level, I would say, like just watching his uh, high school tape for a few weeks into his senior year. Yeah, again, if you haven't already, make sure to go click subscribe. But we're gonna have. I mean, Terry Bussey's committing the twenty eighth. We're gonna have tons more content uh, just about that recruitment. If there's any news or. You know, we'll have some videos on that following uh, later this week. So uh, moving on to another position on the offensive side of the ball, that's offensive line. Notable guys still on the board. You have Grant Bricks, Eddie Pierre-Louis, and Daniel aiken Kumi. Did I miss anyone? I I think that's the three I guys. would say Seton. I mean, so I, I think yes, that's the one I missed. If, if he's, he's confirmed visiting this week. Yeah. Jordan yeah. Seton. Jordan Seaton visiting alongside some IMG teammates and David Stone, Jaden Jackson. I believe those two. For sure, Stone. Stone's made that known on Twitter. I would think Jaden Jackson's making the trip as well for the Iowa State game. So uh, we've said it a lot before. David Stone's the best recruiter in the class. That's why it was such a big deal for the Sooners to land him when they did not a uh, signing day type commitment to get Stone in the boat. In August, uh, it's huge on the recruiting trail, especially when you have a four or five star, wh whatever site you want to look at, offensive tackle and Jordan Seaton coming to town, also a teammate of David Stone. Uh, it's going to be hard. We know David Stone got Jaden Jackson to change his mind. Jaden Jackson was going to go to Texas. Like that, that was really, that's where he was going. And then Stone came along on that visit with him. Now Jaden Jackson's a Sooner. So maybe it's the same for Jordan Seaton. Hey, and, that, and that'll be uh, an interesting one for sure. And we'll, we'll continue to see how that plays out over the course of the weekend. And after that, uh, Eddie Pierre, Pierre Luis, that one seems to be um, Oklahoma U, UCF. So, and UCF has the proximity to home Oklahoma, his teammate, Lewis Carter is on roster. Um, so that that's going to be another one that's uh, going to be, it'll be tough for Oklahoma to pull that one off, but, He's a very highly talented player. And then you have Grant Bricks, who's also, you know, regarded by many as one of the best uh, offensive tackles in this class. And that's one that we don't really know a whole lot about. I mean, we all know it's Oklahoma, Nebraska, but he, he's someone who's not really – I mean, you, he's the polar opposite of what David Stone is on social media. He, he's more like Dominic McKinley, in my opinion. And uh, as far as his recruitment, his is pretty quiet. Um, but look at those four guys you mentioned. To me, I think, and, and Bill Biedenboe, early on in this recruitment, recruiting class, people were talking about how, oh, I don't know about this class with Biedenboe, but I, I think he lands three of those four. 
And if I had to pick the one that's not going to be a Sooner, personally, I would go with Briggs. I, I would lean Eddie Pierre, uh, Jordan Seaton, and uh, Danny. Th- those would be the three that I, I would pick. Wow. Uh, I, I don't know if I would go with uh, a number as of right now. Uh, it is like we've mentioned on. Hey, I, I, I just tell you what I think. Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I, nothing wrong with that. Just like you guys mentioned, like uh, offensive line recruiting was in a dark place at one point. Uh, missed out on Casey Poe. That was one that really hurt. That was uh, kind of just unfortunate situation on uh, how the visits panned out for him. Uh, so Bill Biedenboe was put in a tough position, uh, not landing the top guys that he initially uh, was going after. But really, even if they don't land Jordan Seaton or Grant Bricks, uh, it's a pretty good offensive line class to have as these guys aren't going to be expected to start from day one. Like, they're going to do the, the Bill Biedenbow, uh development in the system. They're going to learn the system a bit. And, and next year, there's going to be a lot, possibly a lot of new starters. Even I, I could see up to a completely new offensive line from what was uh, – sent out their week one against Arkansas State. Yeah. Now, only time will – Yeah, it, it, that's really what depends on if he uh, stays or if he goes pro. Uh, everyone else, that's four guys down for sure. Uh, what, what, Joe? I was going to say, who would you on those four that we mentioned on this recruiting class, who are you least confident that you would get out of those four? Eddie Pierre-Louis. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm – Really? Go Eddie pierre I'm not – I'm not confident in Jordan Seaton, but I could see it to where Oklahoma could, you know, win the relationship side. The this is where my heart wants to be part of the yeah. recruitment. So I mean, he he has he, he's he went visited Colorado recently. There's a lot of different schools in that one. So I I would predict that Oklahoma will win that battle and will set themselves up to be in the top two or three of Seton's recruitment when it comes down to the end. It'll be a tough one to win, though. Uh, I it, With Jordan Seton, I trust David Stone. David Stone yeah. being along with him really like kind of a host, even though he's not, uh, just to be the guy in the class, uh, an IMG teammate. They've been familiar with each other, been friends, uh, brothers even, for a few years now at IMG. Uh I, I just I think it's going to be very hard to have David Stone and Bill Biedenbow recruiting you and to be able to say uh, uh, Oklahoma's out. That's it's gonna maybe they won't win it, but they're for sure going to make it interesting as well, uh, this recruitment progresses. Yeah, and can we all agree October twelfth? Oh, you getting a commitment? Yeah, that's, yeah, uh, barring a. Significant change, yes. Yeah, Danny's going to com- Daniel's going to come in on October twelfth. I would think so. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think we talked about it all with the the O line, um, defensive backs is another really interesting position because right now you have Jeremiah Newcomb, Eli Bowen at corner, and then you have Michael Patterson McDonald and Jaden Hardy at safety. Michael Boganowski, the first name, we can go ahead and get started with this. He took an official visit to Kansas this past weekend, so it seems like, you know, Kansas, Oklahoma, Kansas State maybe even, but does seem to be, you know, between those three schools. At that point, it just comes down to, is he going to stay close to home or not? Very similar with Grant Briggs. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. That's that's interesting on just – Boganowski was before, I mean, a lot of people questioned, oh, why is OU even – giving him a spot, all that. He's uh, not as highly of rated as a guy. Think, okay, OU's in it. Kansas State, Kansas, they have no chance. It's going to be the Sooners. That really hasn't happened yet. It's been – that's that in, that recruitment's just very interesting on the – like the amount of momentum swings uh, we've seen throughout it. Because there was a time where everyone thought, it, it's going to be OU. OU offered him. He's got to go to OU. Uh, his dad has a relationship with Brent Venables. Uh, back from the K-State days, I believe. Is that yep. right, Brady? Uh, so, and then he's a Kansas kid, KC kid, I believe. So, Kansas, Kansas State are going to be factors in that recruitment as well. And then Kansas State really just, like, swung things back in their favor 
for a long stretch of time. Oh, you've got them back on campus a few times, kind of throughout it, and then now you're throwing in Kansas. Like, uh, it's weird that it's went from a two horse race to now a three horse race, considering he just OV'd at Kansas. So that one's interesting. I wonder how long they're going to be willing to before they're like, okay, we got to, we need another safety in this class. We got to kind of look elsewhere unless you're in right now. Well, but, and Boganowski did, you know, one of the interesting things there is. It, again, it's just a really weird uh, recruitment, but he he's someone who the, – the difference from what it is is uh, the way Oklahoma values David Stone is the way that Kansas and Kansas State value Michael Boganowski. He is the one they have to land. In state, you got to get him with um, – I believe his dad played at Kansas State. Yeah. So Kansas State – I mean, legacy to Kansas State, they got to get him. But, I mean, you know, Boganowski, that's an interesting one. We did see Oklahoma offer Reggie Powers. Uh, they have still remained somewhat contact with Justin Denson, um, who's currently committed to Michigan State, also Reggie Powers. And then you got Devin Jordan at corner, the in-state kid. I know, Hunter, you've watched him a few times this season. That It seems to be Oklahoma TCU. Yeah, it's OU TCU. Devin Jordan, uh, he's a four-star for a reason when you watch him play. Uh, he is a no flight zone. The ball's not even thrown his way because uh, he's just not good. And so some people have been like, oh, can't tell. But the ball doesn't get thrown his way. And that's just a sign of respect for how good of a the corner he is. Uh, he also is very good at making tackles in open field when the ball's not even really close to him. I saw him uh, against Westmore close in a few times. Uh, he was in coverage on his guy ball was checked down, him go downfield, make the tackle. So uh, Devin Jordan's one would be shocked if OU does not win that. Uh, TCU stayed in it a lot longer. That was one I really thought would be wrapped up by this point in time. I mean, it's uh, September 24th, uh, and he's a homegrown kid from Union. Who was – Union. OU doesn't lose at Union. Like He was at the OUTU game. Yeah, he was. Uh but what, what the big thing is, is like when there's a kid from Union, they're going to OU. That's like how it works always. So his is drug out quite a bit. Still, you got Danny Okoye committed now. Uh, and a lot of people are like, okay, who's next? Danny Okoye says, Devin Jordan. Like, you're next. I think Stone weighed in on that one too. So McDonald did too. Yeah, Michael Patterson, McDonald. I mean, all the Oklahoma kids are wanting them to join them at OU. So uh, I think it's going to happen eventually. Again, hard to tell when. It might just be a kind of a spur of the moment. Uh, Hayes Fawcett tweet all of a sudden sent out, and he's committed. Yeah, like Eli Bowen, that one was wild on. uh, And everyone should have expected it because he put that top two out like two weeks before. It was just never a date announced, and then it just randomly happened one night. Maybe that's what Devon Jordan wants to do. Yeah, uh, I mean, that can be the case for Grant Briggs, Michael Boganowski. I mean, we can go down the list. You don't really know when it's going to happen. And with those two, I mentioned, you know, you're not as sure as OU, but still you don't know when it's going to happen. So uh, anything else to add on uh, recruits that they're still recruiting? I I would just add one thing, and it's not on – Guy, I, I, I would just ask y'all, because I, I don't follow as closely as y'all, uh, we're in, in – in some areas, we're, we're in flipness season, right? And, and we're in guys that have committed. Is there any names that you think keep an eye on because of either uh, just, oh, you had a great relationship with them and maybe the team's not playing well or coaching change, like Michigan State, obviously they're going through a lot. Uh, is there any names that I would say that, hey, just keep – your eye out for this, maybe. Nobody. I mean, the biggest thing is uh, once the visitor list uh, is kind of out for this weekend, depends on who makes their way uh, to campus in that. Uh, the Michigan State guys, there's been a few offers, right, Brody? That have there's been, been a few offers. Like can't. a free offer. Uh, contact being opened back up with uh, everything going on there with Mel T- Tucker no longer being that coach. So 
uh, a lot of uncertainty at that program on what uh, direction they're going to head into uh, after this season. Okay. I don't think I have anything else. Yeah, that, that pretty much sums it up for this video. If you haven't, make sure you go ahead and click subscribe. Make sure you turn the notifications on. Again, we talked about Terry Bussey in this video. He's committing the 28th. We're going to have a whole lot more uh, coming your way about Terry Bussey, anything we hear. The best way to get what we hear uh, first would be to join our Discord server, which will be in the comment section down below. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Boomer. Boomer. <laughs>